Why come to this chemistry practical class every day? Today, we want to quickly run through the chemistry practical that is likely to come out for our 2025 Y. Now, we quickly want to run through some sample questions so that you see and have the ideas of the likely questions that will come out tomorrow. So, Y has provided us with sample, and the sample is labeled sample C. So we don't know what is contained in our sample C, as you can see. This is our sample C. Now, and we have these sample questions that we want to quickly run through to work on our sample C. This is the question. You are provided with a sample level C. C is a mixture of two substances. Find out the following text of the sample C and record your observations and inferences in the spaces provided. Put all of C in the test tube. So we are following the instruction. We put all of C in the test tube and add about 5 cm of water. Sometimes this might not be 5, it might be 10, it might be 20 cm of water. So when you have a considerable amount of water, of distilled water, and test with litmus paper. Now, this is our sample C. We have put our sample C inside the test tube and we've added our distilled water. So we have this sample. So, and the instruction says we should test with distilled with litmus papers. So these are our red litmus paper and our blue litmus paper. So let's test with our blue litmus paper. Testing our solution with blue litmus paper. See, this blue litmus paper turns red. It has turned blue litmus paper red. Now let's test it with red litmus paper. Definitely it will have no effect. And there is no reaction here. Yes. So it shows yes. that the so this solution of sample C turned Blue is most of red. Now you come to your test table observation and inferences. Now what you what will you record here? Here you write C because the sample is a solid sample. You can see I found that. So I will put solid here to show that it is a solid state. Plus distilled water. Now this is the sample now, the resulting solution. So we have sample C dissolved to give a pale blue solution. As you can see. The salt, the salt completely to give this pale blue. So, if you want, don't want to use pale blue, you can use light blue. As you can see, this light, right? So, you can see light blue solution. Now, we tested it with litmus paper. Plus our litmus paper, you can record this here. Plus litmus paper. The solution turned blue litmus paper red. Now, when the sample is soluble to give this blue solution, you will record your inference with the C in solid state is a soluble salt. Now, because of the effect of the litmus paper, we record the solution is acid. acid. Because acid turns blue litmus paper red. red. Now, that is, that is gone. Now, to, now we said we should divide our, our solution into four portions. To the first portion of the solution, hard fermenting solution A and B, comma, and eat. Then hard dilute hydrochloric acid solution. Now, we added our friendly solution. This is our friendly solution A. And this is our friendly solution B. So, if I'm adding my friendly solution A, I will take my sample and add my friendly solution like this A. Then, add my friendly solution B like this. I will add it. You see the reaction that you will get. Can you see? So, this is my friendly solution B. Now, eating this sample, what am I going to get? I'm going to get the reaction. So, instantly when you hear C plus value solution A and B and heat. So, just note that you are testing for reducing sugar. And when you heat it, you are going to get something like this. This is the result of the heating. So, it has given us brick red precipitates. So, now, when you are recording your result, you come on that test, you say C. Now, in a chaos state, you put this in brackets, a chaos, because it's no more solid. Plus fairly solution A and B plus it. What do we have? Brick red precipitate form. The formation of brick red precipitates. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Now, what is the inference you are going to record here? Sample C is a reducing sugar. And the sample of reducing sugar is what? Glucose. So you can put it that glucose is present. Do you understand? Now, when you go to the next, they now say, after that, then add dilute and acid. 
Where is dilute and alcoholic acid? Here yes. is our dilute and alcoholic acid. So when you put dilute and alcoholic acid to it, why you see the reaction is going to continue. It's coming to color. When you are putting dilute and alcoholic acid to this solution, you are either going to have what we call dark red precipitate. It will disappear to give a bluish green solution or colorless solution. Do you understand? So, as you can see here, that is getting to be colorless. Over time, the reaction will turn completely and give me to give bluish green precipitation. So, the solution will turn from big red to bluish green. Now, what are you going to record? The solution contains acidic oxide, which is copper one oxide that is present in that solution. Let's go to the second portion. To the second portion of solution of sample C, had sodium hydroxide in drops, then in messes. So let's take our another sample. So another, another solution, we have our sodium hydroxide here. So we want to add it in draw, then in messes, right? In draw, then in essence. Can you see what we have? Now, what do we have? This is a gelatinous precipitate, but the color is pale blue or light blue. So what are you going to write? You say, pen, you now come to your test first. You say, this C in the chaos state plus sodium hydroxide in drops. What do you have? Pale blue gelatinous precipitate form. Now, then in nexus. So let's add sodium hydroxide in nexus and see what we are going to have. Yes. See now. We have the precipitate, and the precipitate is still there. So the precipitate is insoluble. This is insoluble, as you can see. It's not soluble. So you come to your test and say, then in excess, the precipitate is insoluble in excess sodium hydroxide. In other words, you can write it here, pale blue gelatinous precipitate form, which is insoluble in excess sodium hydroxide. And you can separate it into two, like this. That the, the pale blue but the light not precipitate form, then the precipitate is insoluble in excess sodium hydroxide. Then eating this, what are you going to have? You have a brick red precipitate form. And that brick red is indicating that the, the solution contains reducing sugar. sugar. Now we are moving to the next, to the third portion. Add aqueous ammonia solution dropwise. Then in excess. So let's take another portion of our sample. We have aqueous ammonia. So this is our aqueous ammonia. You had it in drops, like this. See what we have. So when we added aqueous ammonia in drops, let's not forget. So here, when we added sodium hydroxide, we have pale blue gelatinous precipitate. So blue gelatinous precipitate is indicating the presence of copper 2 plus. Yes. So you come to your test, inference. And tell us copper 2 plus is present. present. Now, when it is even in soluble in excess sodium hydroxide, it's still copper 2 plus present. present. Now, when you heated it and you got your brick red precipitate, reducing sugar is present. present. So that is how to record your inference. Now, this is aqueous ammonia. Yes. We've added aqueous ammonia in draw. You can have we have a light blue gelatinous precipitate that is formed too. Now let's put it in message and see what we are going to have. Can you see what we have in message? The precipitate has dissolved to give deep blue. This is deep blue, deep blue, not light blue again. Yes. So we have deep blue precipitate. Now you come here, you tell all that aqueous solution of sample C plus ammonia, aqueous ammonia in draw. We have light blue or pale blue gelatinous precipitate formed. Then, in essence, the precipitate dissolves to give a blue blue solution. In other words, you can say light blue gelatinous precipitate formed, which is, is, which is soluble or dissolved in essence aqueous ammonia to give a deep blue solution. Do you understand? Yes. So, what are you now saying? You come to your inference. Now, here, copper 2 plus is present. But when you have this deep blue solution yeah. and it is soluble in excess aqueous ammonia, so it's a confirmatory test for copper. 
So you tell her that copper 2 plus is confirmed. So we use aqueous ammonia for the confirmatory test of copper 2 plus. So we've confirmed copper. Now, to the fourth portion, we had barium chloride solution. So this is our fourth portion. Now, we need to add our barium chloride solution. Add barium chloride solution in drops, followed by a few drops of dilute hydrochloric acids. Now, come to your test. Aqueous solution of some but barium chloride in drops. So let's add it. We have barium chloride in drops. So what do we have? When we had it, we have formation of white precipitate. Can you see? Yes. So this is white precipitate. When you have white precipitate like this, when you have barium chloride to this kind of solution, what you are going to get, like this, we have like different types of anions. You know, the copper that we just covered is cation. Yes. Now we are talking about anion here. So what you have is sulfur. Uh, SO4 2 minus or SO3 2 minus or CO3 2 minus. Now you come to your test, C plus barium chloride, white precipitate form. Now what do we have in our inferences? We have SO4 2 minus, SO3 2 minus or CO3 2 minus is present. Now, the last set had a hydrochloric acid. So this is the sample. Now, where is our hydrochloric acid? This is our hydrochloric acid. So let's add our dilute HCl to this. So put in hydrochloric acid. So the precipitate is insoluble. Or soluble? It's insoluble. You can still see white precipitate here. Yeah. The precipitate is insoluble. Once you see that this precipitate is insoluble when you add HCl, it is confirming that out of these three, Anions that we showed here, SO4 2 minus, SO3 2 minus, CO3 2 minus. So to have this, when you have HCl, the precipitate is insoluble in the cells HCl. Yes. Now, that is a confirmatory test for SO4 2 minus. Mm -hmm. It means SO4 2 minus is confirmed. It's not confirmed. Now, when this is not confirmed, our cation that was confirmed is copper 2 plus. And anion confirmed here is what? So for SO42 minus. So Cu2 plus and SO42 minus is directly telling us that in our sample, we likely have copper sulfate that is present. Because, because we confirm both the copper Cu2 plus and SO42 minus. So now, these are the likely questions that we should be expecting based on our sample. Now, Coming to this place, test the flame color of sample C using a non luminous flame. Probably they can ask us to heat the sample. Just take your powder sample, put in a test tube or burning tube, and heat it. So you are expected to get a the green flame when you are heating it. So just recall that sample C in solid state, now like solid sample, plus heat. So you have sample C bonds with a green flame. Mm -hmm. So and when you have a green flame, it's telling you that copper 2 plus is what yeah, is yeah, present. Yeah, yeah. So and you record your evidence that copper 2 plus is yeah. present. So this is our table. Test, observation, yeah. inferences. But according to these questions. Now, this is the concluding part of the table. Test, observations, yeah. inferences. So when you are inside your chemistry practical class. Try to pay attention. So follow the procedure, follow the steps. Read your instruction properly, effectively, and make sure you follow it. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Now, make sure that you add it accordingly. So it's not compulsory that they will ask you this one first, or this one second or third. So they can ask you to do anything first. So, but let your brain just master that. When you are testing for this, this is the kind of result you are getting, and this is what is likely to be present. And not when you are to confirm and you are to say it is present, the confirmation test and the normal test. So, with this, we should be able to do well in our sort analysis, which is qualitative analysis in our chemistry practical for this year. Thank you for this class. Don't forget to share with your friends so that you can have a view too.